Right. Now it's time to join Kleena Foley. She's over there in the red corner and she's got two of Ireland's brightest up and coming stars with her. She's got Nicole Lynch and Sarah Katiernan. So these really are the next generation of Irish talent. Uh, immediately on my left is Sir Tiernan, and this is Nicole Lynch. And they're going to tell you, first of all, about their sport and about their achievements. So first up to you, the T-shirt is a giveaway. Some of you over there can't see it. Uh, hi, I'm Sirka. Uh, I'm 19 and I play basketball. And what is the height of your achievements so far? Uh, I suppose my best achievement to date has definitely got to be winning the under-18 European Championship silver medal in Dublin two years ago. Um, <laughs> It, it did something really, it made history for Irish basketball. And what was that history? Uh, the history was it was the first time that uh, Ireland had ever qualified for an A European Championship. So uh, last year, last summer, the girls got to go and play in uh, the A division in Italy. Uh, I was too old, unfortunately, but um, to be part of it and to like win the semi final in Dublin was just incredible. And last summer, you also did something which was pretty amazing for you as well as an 18 year old. Uh, yeah, I got to play with the senior women's last summer then in Cork, so that was brilliant. European Championships as well. Yeah. And it's been a pretty special year for you at national and uh, domestic level. Tell us about it. And where's your club? Uh, yeah, I play with Liffey Celtics out in uh, Leesip, uh, just in Kildare, just outside Dublin. But um, we won the Hill Hoops National Cup this year, and we also won the league. And unfortunately, we lost in overtime in the playoffs final, so it ruined our perfect year. But other than that, it was brilliant. Two out of three ain't bad, yeah. isn't it? Hey, come on. Two out of three ain't bad. And I should tell you also that this 19-year-old this is the Super League three years in a row. She's won Young Player of the Year in the Irish Super League. That's how good she is. <laughs> so from basketball, we go, as they say, to something very, very different. Nicole Lynch, tell us, what's your sport? So I'm an international motorbike racer. And... <laughs> Um, so I'm the first female international motorbike racer that Ireland's ever had and in 2016 I was lucky enough to go and race in the Women's European Cup. So we raced as a support class to World Superbikes which is one of the highest tier motorbike championships in the world and I was happy, I finished sixth place so did quite well for myself, I was happy enough with it. Everybody in the room, everybody in the room wants to know one question which is how fast do you go? She's a, she's a track <laughs> racer. So we race on short circuits, which some people might have heard of road racing, and we stick to the track most of the time. And this year we've moved up to 600cc motorbikes. So the class is called Super Sport, and the bikes this year will go upwards of 180 mile an hour. Is his top speed. So it's, it's pretty fast. It's a step up from what we did last year on slightly smaller bikes. Um, but no, it's really good. I'm absolutely loving it. And the obvious question, obviously, as well is, with both of you, we're talking about can't see, can't be. It's one of the themes of 2020 is if athletes can't see people, how do they aspire to things? So for you two, you know, have you seen your sports much? And if you didn't, then who inspired you and who are your heroes? First circle. Yeah, I suppose I was quite lucky. Like, my parents really, like, brought me around to sports when I was a kid. And I remember my mum and dad brought me and my sister into watch senior rooms play in the arena when I was a kid and um, Lindsay Peet was playing wow. and I wanted to be Lindsay Peet. <laughs> like, I was just mesmerised. I used to beg my mum to bring me out to DC to watch her games and you know obviously at the time she was also playing with the Dublin senior footballers and she's just an absolute athlete. Now she's retired from both basketball and football and is playing international rugby. Yeah, as you do. As you so do. I think that just shows what an absolute competitor she was and she's someone I still really admire to this day. Wow what a hero to have. Um, and Nicole what about you? Again I mean I if I'm at a driver, uh, traffic lights, I look bikers. I don't think I've ever even seen a woman socially driving a bike. So where were, you, where were your heroes coming from? What was the inspiration? Yeah, it's really unusual. And as I said, even at the moment, there's only, I think, five women racing in the whole of Ireland out of, uh, there must be at least 300 men racing. Um, basically, my dad used to race motorbikes. And when I was four, we went on a bicycle. He took off the stabilizers one day. He's like, can you ride a bicycle? I was like, yeah, okay, I got it. And then the next week, he brought in this mini moto motorbike. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom was sitting there in the kitchen going, no way, absolutely not. And I cried, and I said, you know, I can't go on it. I, wa I want to see my mom go on it first. So she sat on it thinking it's, it's this little bike. But he had done the engine on it, so she sat on it open full throttle and promptly fell straight <laughs> off the back of it. And that was me. I was like, yes, okay, right, I'll have a go. But um, <laughs> So we were just always around bikes. Like, Dad kind of raced, so there's always been the interest. And he always has put tools in my hand and taught me how to, you know, service cars fix motorbikes a whole lot 
um, there was no women to, to kind of look at. I remember watching motorbikes on the TV and there were grid girls with the umbrellas and I said to my dad, I was about eight and I was like, why, why aren't the girls racing? Like, why are they holding the umbrellas? And he said he didn't know. He says there was no rules against it. And I was like, right, well, I'm going to do it. I said, I want to race. I don't want to hold any umbrellas. And that, that was... <laughs> <laughs> she had... Um she has a brilliant picture on her Facebook page at the moment, and it's uh, a little girl with a big, huge motorbike helmet on it, and it says, my dad told me not to chase boys, but to pass them out, which I think <laughs> is brilliant, really brilliant. Um, so is it, exp I mean, Cirque obviously has the support of Basketball Ireland and Sport Ireland, and she has a team around her, but ha is it expensive? How do you fund it? So to go to the European Championships, I was quite lucky. I started racing on a small bike, and I got picked up by a sponsor in the first year of my racing. And it's a personal sponsor. There's no state funding for it. And the following year, I got a phone call saying, listen, we have this opportunity to go to Europe. It's up to you if you want it or not, but it's going to cost you over 50,000 euros to compete. And immediately the answer was, we can't afford it. But the sponsor himself put up over half the, the money for that. And then myself and my family found the rest. You know, we applied to a couple of state funding things, but you're not athletics, you're not football, mm. you know, there's... We, they didn't have the, the scaffolding, I suppose, to actually provide that funding. There was no route to even apply for it. So at the end of the day, we had to fund it ourselves. And, and now, to be fair, with the, the 20 by 20 movement, that's exactly what they're trying to bring in, is the funding for sports that are like they're not as popular as, I suppose, all the state sports that you do. So um, currently, we're still self-funded, funded by personal sponsors. But it would be great in the future to see more girls getting into it and even even the guys, you know, but get the funding to go overseas. Ireland, for such a small country, has a great population of motorbike ri riders. Mm -hmm. Even in Northern Ireland, Jonathan Ray has won the World Championship four times in a row now. So, but even, even so, the, the money he had to put in just to get there, like his parents remortgaged the house three times. Wow. So that's the level of investment the family have to yeah. put in and all your support system have yeah. to put in. So um, it's obviously a busy time. An awful lot of international athletes are away at the moment, competing in athletics and basketball, soccer. They're all over the world competing our junior teams. Um, but you two have, what is next for you? Particularly for you, sir, if you have a big event coming up. Yeah, so uh, we've done the 20 European Championships in Cospo now in three weeks. So uh, we're kind of getting all our preparation stuff on the way for that. Uh, we're in Croatia last weekend getting some practice games in and we're really excited now to go to Cospo. And, and is that a lot of that team that you played within those under-18s? Yeah, it's a lot of the team that won the silver medal two years ago, so it's really exciting to kind of be back playing together and hopefully we'll be able to go and compete for some more medals. And what about you, Nicole? What is the big um, event for you really that you're thinking about coming up? So, well, at the end of this month, we're over in the UK to race in Donington Park. We race usually in the UK and a bit internationally, but with the step up to the bigger bike, we decided to come home and get a base level set up. We didn't want to go over there and not do well, not perform. So um, at the end of this month, we're over to Donington Park, which is our next UK race. It's one of four that we're doing over there. And then next year, we're hoping to head back to the Thundersport UK Championships, which is one of the highest championships in the UK. And you race in Mandelo as well on a regular basis? Yeah, we'll be in Mandelo at the end of August. Um, I think it's the 22nd, 23rd. So it'll be my first time at Mandelo in about four years. I'm really looking forward to it. If any of you around, you're more than welcome to come in. Send me a tweet. We can arrange you know, tickets at the gate because I'd love to see more women going to, to spec date to get their, their little girls into it. For We always get girls you know, walking through the, the paddock and little girls always encourage them to come, you know, sit on the bike, you know, there's, there's girls racing and especially the, the bike is bright pink at the moment and that's just, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's always a winner with the, the younger girls to, to come over. It's like, look, Barbie. It's like, well, <laughs> nearly. <laughs> very, 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 very fast, Barbie. <laughs> Well, look, you are our next generation. This is the next gen. This is the, these are the people that these people are inspiring. They're going to inspire the next generation. So we are so proud of you. We can't wait to see what you do next. And best of luck for everything in the future. Thank you very much.